How are we doing everyone? Hope you're well. This is an intro before the intro. So yeah, I'm going to upload this one. I was meant to upload a band episode today, but in all honesty, this week I've lost track of time and I've not had time to edit it. So I'm going to edit that one this week and next week's episode will be my chat with Joe and Glenn from Penelope Tree. Uh, yeah. Time just got away from me this week, so you're having a solo episode today. Um, what else? So, if anyone subscribes to the YouTube channel, I'm going to upload some different content over there. Band of the Week, gone. Um, I was struggling to keep up with it because with the podcast, I've got a full-time job. I've got two kids. Uh, we recently recorded some Dimbers episodes, so they'll be coming soon. And yeah, I just I haven't got the time to shoot and edit a band of the week like i know they're only two minutes long but they probably take me an hour and a half each episode i know it doesn't look like it so yeah i'm just going to give a band of the week at the end of each episode now i think so listen if you want to hear band of the week um i appreciate everybody that does listen to the podcast you know listener numbers are still good which i am amazed at so thank you very much if you've been listening anyway we're going to get into the proper intro now so i will see you in a bit how we doing everyone hope you're well welcome back to the shape through fate podcast it's going to be an episode of me rambling today so hold on to your horses because we're going to talk about gigs so yeah we're gonna so yeah i always start with so yeah and i don't know why but anyway we're going to split this one into a couple of sections so first couple of sections will be my favourite shows that I've played. So I'll do that as acoustic shows and then band shows. How many of each? Will we say three? We'll do three of each. My favourite three solo shows and my favourite three shows with a band. And then how many should we do for the next? Maybe five. So the next section we'll do five. So I was having a conversation with myself outside of my body that was meant to be in my head. Anyway, I'm rambling. We'll do five of my favourite shows that I have been a part of the audience for. So I guess let's get into the solo stuff first. So, I don't know, I won't rank them in an order because I enjoy shows, I don't enjoy shows, I don't think I've got a favourite. I mean, that's probably a lie and in the next five minutes you'll find out that I'm lying. So, acoustic shows. I think... The best place to start will be my first ever acoustic show. I can remember it. I was supporting Dave McPherson at the Joiners in Southampton, which for me is massive. So one of my favourite bands, if not my favourite band of all time, is In Me, and their singer is Dave McPherson. So for me to play my first acoustic show, opening for him was pretty pretty special. I won't say it was a good turnout, because if memory serves me correctly, it wasn't a very good turnout. I think maybe I did about eight tickets. There must have only been about 25 people in the building, but the songs that I remember I played, I don't know why I used to do it. So I used to be really um, shy or reserved when it came to singing. So I used to get a lot of people say that, oh, you sound like an American, you're not very good at singing. I used to get it all the time, which is true. I mean, I I really did sound like I was an American. I was Tom DeLonge, is what I was aiming for. And then, yeah, so the whole, oh, you're not American, got kind of produced out of me as I started recording in bands, and I developed how I sing now. But one thing that I did notice is every time I would write a song, I'd flick between keys and whatever, but... I would always sing in my lower register just because it was my comfort zone and I'd never push out of it. I wouldn't go for any big notes. I wouldn't go for any high notes. I wouldn't. I would just stick in this almost monotonal drone, which at the time, yeah, it was all right. But now I think I've developed, and I don't know when it changed, but I stopped caring what people thought. So I think my problem back then is I was really concerned about if I push it and it's not very good, people are going to say it's rubbish. And I kind of held myself back thinking I don't want to be judged, so I'm going to put myself out there. But I'm going to put the like the smallest piece of me out there. Whereas now, whatever, if you like my music, great. If you don't, I really couldn't care less. Like, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. And don't come to a show if you don't like it. So yeah, first show there. 
Dave McPherson at the Joiners in Southampton. Can't remember the date, can't remember the year, but I know it was the first one. Maybe 2006 or 2007. I was in a band called Armoured Hi-Fi at the time. And I just remember that was my first acoustic show. Uh, what else? So number two... Um, I'm going to say a show at The Attic in Winchester. I opened for a band called The Deep Dark Woods. They're a Canadian band, and they're really good. Really chill, if you like your, your music to chill you out. Go and listen to them. They were promoting their album, The Place I Left Behind, which is probably one of my most listened to albums, to be fair. I'd never heard of them before I got offered the show. Um... Yeah, so I show up at this venue, we go up the stairs, it's above the Railway Inn in Winchester, which is like the rocky venue, so the attic is above it. And I went there, I had my brother with me, I had a mate with me, they were the two people that I bought. And we went upstairs and it was weirdly laid out like a lounge, you know, like, so you've got the stage and there's like an armchair on it and some, like, lamps and stuff, really nice vibe in there, and... My concern was no one was going to show up. That's usually the main concern I have when it comes to playing shows, is that no one's going to show up. Now, I just said that I don't care about being judged, but my ego can't handle no one showing up to a show. It just can't. So I'm in this room, and I hear the band asking the promoter, oh, how are we doing as far as pre-sales go? And I'm sure I heard like a really low number. I think the capacity of this place must have been at 60 or 70. So we go and get food, we come back, and the place is fucking rammed. Like properly rammed. I'm pretty sure it must have been a sellout. So that was nice to go on stage, and it was a really receptive audience. And I remember that night I went home and watched Derek Chisora fight Vitaly Klitschko for the World Heavyweight Championship. So I can't remember the date of that, but if you really want to know the date that I opened for the Deep Dark Woods, go and look up that fight. Chisora lost. So, yeah, that's probably my second favourite show, mainly for the vibe. Again, I was in that stage where I was playing monotonal drone songs because I'd not developed the I don't care what people think attitude yet. You know, I might even do a podcast on that because... If you're a singer or a musician, um, naturally you're going to get judged, and I'm not sure when it switched for me, but I couldn't give a fuck what people think. I really don't care. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, that's cool. And I remember that I used to hate the thought of somebody not liking my music. I take it really personally, whereas now I couldn't care less. I really couldn't care. So maybe that's a future episode. Set that one up nicely for a a week where I haven't got my arse in gear to record and edit an episode. So look forward to that one, you lucky people. Anyway, third show. Teddy Rocks Festival 2018. Um, I can remember my daughter was born maybe a month before. It was I'm pretty sure it was April I played it and my daughter was born in March. So I had like a crazy month and um yeah and it was a, a surreal feeling going and playing a show so it was the first time that I'd I'd really like been away I wasn't away for long Teddy Rocks is about 20 minutes from my house but I'd gone for the day and um I was playing and then immediately after me on the main stage in me were playing so it was a bonus for me that I got to see in me but in regards to my show, um, yeah, so I played a song that um, is my little girl's song. Uh, it reminds me of her, so that was quite nice, and there's a soppy bit for you. And the thing that really made this show kind of stand out for me is I'd, obviously, as a musician, you plan your set list and you play your set list and you don't tend to veer off it, and I wasn't expecting anybody to care if I didn't play songs, so after the show... I had some people say, oh, we we drove down from Wolverhampton. There was a car of six of us. We drove down from Wolverhampton because we saw you were playing, Teddy Rocks. And that blew me away to start with. And then they said, oh, you didn't play an unwanted goodbye. I said, oh, you should have said, you should have said, or let me know, because 
I mean, uh, if you want to go and check it out, Unwanted Goodbyes on Spotify. I won't play it now because it's a sad song. Um, so, yeah, they travelled all the way down from Wolverhampton. So I got my guitar, went to the car park and played an Unwanted Goodbye for them. So that's kind of etched in my mind. And then I went and watched In Me on the main stage at Teddy Rocks. So all in all, a good show. So that's the acoustic stuff out of the way. Let's get a little bit louder and we'll go to bands now. So I've only got three three shows to choose from and I have been in five bands. So at least two of them are getting left out. So the most recent show that I can remember the band playing, uh, Southampton Joiners, January 2020, before everything went to shit, we played a sold-out show opening for In Me. And as I've said, and it's not an unknown fact that In Me are my favourite band. They've been my favourite band since like 2002. So 20 years In Me have been my favourite band. And it's taken 20 years for me to play a show with them. Um, So the fact that it's sold out just made it a little bit special. Um, Yeah, so that was ridiculous. So I'm going to put that on the list. As I've only got three to choose from, it would be... um, a travesty that I didn't put that on the list. Um, we're probably going to flip flop between bands now. Uh, second show, Armored Hi Fi at the O2 Academy in Bournemouth, although it was called the Opera House at the time. Uh, mainly just for the prestige of saying I've played that venue. Uh, the stage was massive. Um, can't really remember much of it. I think we only played four songs. But just to play that venue was ridiculous. Like, to stand on the stage and look out, it's it's incredible. Like, that venue is amazing. Yep, yeah, don't remember the gig. I remember how I, I played a show using my SG, which was a rarity, because um, it had broken. This, I think this might have been the one... I think I used it at two shows. This was one of the two shows I used it at. So yeah, it was part of an all-day thing, and I remember we we went into the venue and they had the main stage and like this crappy little like shoebox stage set up next to it. So they were gonna go main stage, side stage, main stage, side stage, and just keep the music flowing throughout. And I was like, I really hope we're not not that I'm an egotist, but you get that close to that stage, you want to play on it. So I remember walking in. I think I can't remember who I said it to one of the band I was like I really hope we're not on that little one and turns out we weren't so all good all good right last one um I'm gonna go with another Armoured Hi-Fi show here simply for the lineup at the time Armoured Hi-Fi played a show with Berry Tomorrow and Faye Komodo uh we played at Chords in Pool uh it was Mr C's at the time yeah just for the lineup like two of my favourite bands and we got to play it and it was a, a great show before Berry Tomorrow got absolutely massive. Um, yeah, so that's the three from the band, I suppose. Rattled through them pretty quick. Played a lot of shows with the band. Uh, you know, we've had some good shows, we've had some dud shows. Um, it's a really like odd feeling when you come off, and I've done it a few times. I'm really critical of myself, so I'll come off and be like, oh, that show was shit. And other people will be saying, no, it was all right, it was all right. But as a musician, if you've messed up, you know you've messed up. Like, people might not notice it, but you know you know you've fucked up somewhere. And I'm too much of a, like, perfectionist. So if I mess up, it really gets to me. So if you come to an Erica Drive show and after it I'm a bit down, chances are I messed up. Like, it's happened before, I'll just sit there and... I'll be in a really like down mood like I can't be asked like that was horrible and it could literally be as much as missing a chord change that's all it could be but if you're a musician you'll know my pain you don't practice to then mess it up so if you do mess it up it gets you down so that's my shows out of the way I tried to rattle through them pretty quick because I don't want to come across as a self so I can't even talk I didn't want to come across as a self-obsessed idiot, although I was talking about myself for 10 minutes and shows that have made absolutely no impact on the world at all. 
So now I am going to talk about my five favourite shows that I've been at. So I've been lucky that I've seen a lot of bands, a lot of my favourite bands, some bands that have never heard of them. They might have been the support band and they've gone on to be one of, you know, my most listened to bands. Um, One thing I will say, which I am very bad at doing, don't write bands off. So I'll listen to one song and say, oh, I don't like that, I, oh, this band isn't for me. Three months later, I'm paying to go and watch him. So don't write them off. Like, I'm, ve- I'm, I'm very quick at dismissing new music, which is something that, you know, I'm trying to get better at, but I'm very set in my ways. You know, I'm too old to change, but I will try. So, let's get into the shows. I'm going to start with one that you might turn off after this. And these are in no particular order because I don't think I've ever I don't think I've got a favorite show that I've been to. Um so we'll start with number 1, which was Nickelback at the O2 in London supported by Daltrey. They were amazing. Like Nickelback live were outstanding. I make no no secret of the fact that I'm a Nickelback fan. I enjoy their music. I think they write good songs. Don't get me wrong. They do have some dud songs. But on that many albums, you're going to get a couple of duds. And they were just brilliant. Like, so... The music was, like, tight. It was so tight. Big sound. Harmonies were so good. Like, the guy that sings harmonies, he should front a band. He's that good of a singer, he could front a band, but you know you're in a good spot where somebody that could easily front a band is, you know, backing up the singer who is amazing. Like, didn't miss a beat, and the support band Daltrey, fantastic. I'd never heard of them. Um, I knew that they sang What About Now because Westlife covered it, so they wrote the song and then Westlife covered it. And that's all I knew about them. And yeah, they were incredible. So all around, a very, very good show. And one that is probably going to be quite divisive. If you like Nickelback, great. If you don't, whatever, it's fine. I like Nickelback. You don't have to. No one's making you like Nickelback. Don't worry. Your street cred's intact. Show number two. I'm going to go for Foy Vance at the Wedgwood Rooms in Portsmouth. Foy Vance is a singer-songwriter. He crafts, we'll say, fantastic songs. He was supported by Ryan McMullen, um, who, singer-songwriter, he's easily got the best voice. Hands down, he is the best live singer in the singer-songwriter genre I have ever heard. If you're the support act... And your last song is a song that you're singing a cappella, and you've got 250 people in the room absolutely silent, like hanging on every word, you're doing something right. And then add to the fact that Foy Vance came on and absolutely smashed his set. Like, he, again, all these musicians are so good live. Um, you don't want to say, oh, they sound exactly like they do on recording, because they don't. And that's the joy and the beauty of live music, I guess, that you get a whole different experience. You listen to it on the album, and some people, Nickelback, uh, a prime example of that, they're so polished and so perfect on recording that when, when you hear it live, it's got a completely different side to it. Now, that's not to say that it's not polished and it's not perfect, but... It's almost like new. You, you're hearing the songs for the first time live. So Foy Vance was another one. You hear it um, on the recording and you've got the added production of maybe different instruments or harmonies or, or whatnot. And then you strip it back to four guys on a stage and it just takes on a different different life. So that's number two. I was waffling. Foy Vance supported by Ryan McMullen. Number two. Number three, I am going to go for... And it's odd because if you ask me what bands I listen to, I'm probably not going to list many of these. Like uh, Nickelback probably get mentioned. 
Foy Vance wouldn't get mentioned. This next guy probably wouldn't get mentioned, and that's Ben Folds. Uh, we, I say we, me and my wife have seen him twice now, I think. We saw him at uh, a venue in Bristol. I think it was the O2 Academy in Bristol. And then we saw him at Southampton Guildhall both times. The guy is a genius. He is so talented. Um, if you get chance to have a have a listen to Ben Folds, just know that he's another one that when he takes it live, he is so quick at either ad libbing or we weren't at that tour. But one of the tours he did that we didn't go to it was um, like a paper aeroplane request show. So you'd write y- y- your requests on a, a piece of paper, make a plane out of it, and throw it on the stage. This guy must have hundreds of songs that people could request and he every night he played a different set based on what paper aeroplane he picked up so there was that uh so that's number three ben folds i'll be honest i can't remember who supported ben folds really can't remember both times i can't remember i think the first time it was like some opera singer lady did it and then she went and played a duet with I. I can't remember. Honestly, can't remember. But it's not important. Ben Folds is the main attraction on that one. So number four, I want to go for something a bit more rocky. And I suppose the best place to go would be the first, what you could call, rock show that I ever went to. Two thousand and three, London Astoria, in me. Um, so what was that? Nineteen years ago. Was it 19 years? My math's rubbish. Maybe 19 years. Who cares how many years ago it was? They were supported by Slam Cartel and Elvis with two S's. Uh, I think... I mean, that show, I was 13. And under 14s had to go with an adult. So my mum sat through it. Well, she stood next to me while I was just gazing at the, the stage like, this band are incredible. Yeah, I, I won't forget that. I remember the guitar player from Slam Cartel had long blonde hair and he played an SG. There's another thing that I can remember from that. And yeah, that was the first time I saw In Me. And yeah, London Astoria holds a place in my heart. I mean, they've knocked it down now, which is annoying because it was on my hit list of places that I really wanted to play. I saw Alterbridge there as well when they played 2004, their first ever time in the UK. But that's not important because that's not on the list. It was a great show. Alterbridge are a great live band. But sorry, Alterbridge, but you're not on the list. You might be. We've got to do number five yet. So number four was In Me at the London Astoria, supported by Elvis with two S's and Slam Cartel. Number five. I feel like I should do some honorary mentions for bands that I've seen multiple times, but I'm not going to mention. So let's have a quick honourable mentions section Hawthorne Heights I've seen them a lot a lot of times Um, they've always put on a very good show but top five maybe not Alterbridge as I just mentioned then seen them a few times and always amazing you know while we're in the honorary mentions section Tremonti Mark Tremonti does his solo stuff and I saw Tremonti live and they were incredible Jamie Lawson, he was good. CKY were very good back in the day. Rancid, they were good. Um, But after saying all of that, I'm going to go with number five of bands that I have seen live. Simply Red were outstanding. Like, I'd say, I'd go as far as to say they were the best band I have ever seen live everything about them perfect like you can tell they've been doing it for a long time everything the production the music not a beat was missed not a note was dud they were very good so if you get chance and you're a fan of simply red i mean i don't know what's offensive about simply red but i mean i should probably research that just in case there is some scoop on simply red i don't think there is um, but yeah, Simply Red were amazing. 
so so good yeah that's that i suppose that's episode seven coming to an end um right we've got uh, a chat with penelope tree joe and glenn from penelope tree next week so we get back to the chats then i'm gonna keep Oh, I'm going to try and keep my foot down. You know, I didn't realise how much effort a podcast episode every Monday would take. And starting in two weeks, maybe three weeks, depending on how we go, I'm adding another show on Thursdays. So, you know what? I'm going to keep going. And if I miss a Monday, sorry. I will, I will really try. The thing is, I don't want to just put ramblings on there. Like, I don't want to go and record an episode like this one just for the sake of having something out on a Monday. Like, I want to try and keep the content good. And this is... I mean, it's good if you want to listen to me waffle for half an hour, but bad if you're expecting a chat with somebody else. I'm sorry. Anyway, if you have been listening, thank you very much. I do appreciate every single one of you that listens. Go to shapethroughfate.com to grab yourself some stuff. I think most of the pre-orders, if not all of them, will be out by now. So make sure if you've got something, you tag us at shapethroughfate on Instagram. Yeah, enjoy the rest of your week, and I'll see you next week for the chat with Joe and Glenn from Penelope Tree. Take it easy, and I'll speak to you soon. So it's future me again. Um, Yeah, as I said, I'm going to try and keep the content fresh and um decent not really a fan of the solo ramblings it just i felt like i had to put something out every monday but we'll see we'll see where we go there's definitely going to be an episode a week because i'm now adding the dimbers in um for anyone that doesn't know what the dimbers is it's not really uh, music oh, i mean we mentioned music it's me uh and two people we're just chatting so come and be part of the conversation uh, that will be out very soon. I've got the first one in the process of being edited. Yeah, that's about it. So, band of the week this week, I'm going to say you should go and check out a band called Surviving December. They're very good. Uh, if you head over to Shape Through Fate on Spotify, there'll be a playlist that's our band of the week playlist, and I'll chuck all of Surviving December in there. Go and check them out. And yeah, hope you have a lovely week, and I will see you, or I'll speak to you next week. Oh.